So you are looking for a cheap build, fellow tarnished who's not looking for a cheap build, but the one who finds it is the lucky one. So consider yourself lucky, you just found it. I'm gonna show you an insanely cheap build that can pull you through whatever type of content you throw at it. It's genuinely one of the best builds for new players, it requires zero spec, it slaps in PvE, it slaps in PvP, it has everything. I feel like this build could even cook for you if you ask it nice enough. But until we figure that one out, let me show you what I know about this build. Check it out. Alright boys. So the build goes like this, Mage Cow with a third spell, first passive. Alright, as I go through the build I will explain each ability and what they do and how they work. First of all, and, and the passives, Fire Breath, this is the ability that you're gonna have on the D. Take it out of context or not take it out of context, that's none of my business. Breathe Fire in a cone in front of you, dealing 395 magical damage over 3 seconds to all enemies hit. Let me see if I'm gonna be able to actually showcase you this, yes I'm gonna be able to showcase this ability quite, quite well. Ah, this is the one-shot crossbow. I might die here. <laughs> Panic. Panic. Let me record my tutorial, man. Go, you fiend. All right. So, fire breath. You still not done? You still not done? You still wanna die? You still wanna die? All right. You still wanna die? If you insist. Did you guys see that? Now you, now you done? Now you done? Thank you for your kind donation, sir. Now let me record my tutorial, you fiend! All right. So going back to it, the, if you, if you're wondering if this build works, I I think that answered it. I I genuinely think that answered it. But uh, there's gonna be more examples. There's gonna be more examples, chat. Do not fret. Do not fret. All right. So the D, the D is a fire breath in a cone. It looks much like this. It deals AoE damage to all the enemies caught in it. Then you have this passive. This passive is called Aggression. This mainly increases your damage and your healing cast. The healing cast does not matter for you. I mean, no, it, it kind of matters actually for this. You will heal for a little bit more and you're gonna deal more damage. Overall, pretty good passive. It's generally the passive you wanna run uh, as a cloth user. So whatever items you have from the cloth uh, side, you wanna use this passive. Then you wanna have Mercenary Jacket with a third ability which is called Bloodlust. You're gonna have this on your R. What Bloodlust does, every single time you auto attack or you just deal direct damage to somebody, direct damage meaning non-dot damage, you're gonna heal yourself for 97 HP. And it uh, this can happen up to 7 times. And we have the Balanced Mind passive. This passive increases your damage and your defensives by a little bit. Not a huge increase, but still it adds up. Soldier Boots. You wanna have the second ability which makes you move 80% faster. Not a huge boost, but it adds up. And it also restores your HP. 129 health over 5 seconds, about like 10 HP, 12 HP per second, which is great. It looks a lot like this. Alright, as for the passive, you want to have the second passive, which increases your defensives by 2.4%. Again, not a huge boost, but it does add up. For an offhand, you want to have the Torch. More expensive version would be the Muisak, but not really recommending it. You want to have a normal cape, a normal, uh, like uh, a more expensive version would be the Tedford cape, but again, not really needed if you're a new player, especially because that doubles the price of the build. Let me explain first what the Torch does. The Torch makes your cooldown, uh, like restores your cooldowns faster. Basically, you're going to get your abilities faster than you would without a torch. What a normal cape does, well, basically nothing. <laughs> Just occupies the slot and gives you some extra item power, and I guess it gives you a little bit more energy. The Tedford cape, however, would do a little bit more damage, but that's another another cape that we don't have right now. Then you want to have the roast pork, which makes you steal ten, almost 10% 10 of the health that the enemy has lost. So basically, you do 100 damage. For 100 damage, you steal 9.4 HP. It's pretty good and it adds up, especially because of the passive that you have on the battle axe which is this one right here, but we're gonna get to it. As for the battle axe itself, for PvE, you wanna have this Q, which uh, just does AoE damage and applies a, de a debuff, like a dot, that also applies a debuff. Basically, every single time you do this hit, you're gonna get a rending bleed charge on your enemy. If you have three of those charges, the enemy is gonna take less healing. This is one of the best weapons. I mean, axes in general are amazing against healers because of this reason right here. If you have the max amount 
amount of stacks, which is three stacks, they just get much less healing. Oh, for PvP, you want to swap with this one. The reason you want to swap with this one, it's because it's much easier to hit and you get it much faster. This is on a 1.8 second cooldown. This is on a 2.8 second cooldown. So it's basically the same thing, but it's just much easier to hit at a much lower cooldown. So it's honestly a much better option for 1v1s and for boss fights as well. If you want to do PvE, like let's say a solo dungeon, you want to stay with this for the trash mobs and for this, I mean swap to this for the boss fights. Then you want to have this W. This W does uh, three things. It increases your damage by two by 25%, which is great. It increases your move speed by 40%, coupled with the F can make you go quite fast actually and it also increases your auto attack speed the latter is the most important because if you pair this like what part of your build would require auto attack speed this one right here if you manage to pair the w with the r you're basically going to take full advantage of your mercenary jacket so that's kind of what you want to be doing though i'm going to be going into the rotation in a second let's first discuss the build itself then you want to have uh, i mean this is the e straight up the e it's fairly straightforward it looks like this and you can cast two of them the first one deals damage based on the amount of Q stacks, like of Q uh, rending blade charges that you have on, on your enemy, uh, with zero stacks dealing uh, 500 damage and three stacks dealing up to 712 damage. And the second E, the second axe that you throw, heals you based on the amount of charges that you have on your enemy. So based on the amount of uh, dots that you have on your enemy, with zero dots healing you for 100 HP and three dots healing you for up to 300 HP. Honestly, very, very good. And as for the passive, you want to have the lifesteal passive. This deals 15% of the HP that the enemy has lost. So if you deal 100 damage, you're going to take 15 HP back as a straight up heal. How does this build actually work? In PvE, it's quite self-explanatory. You just do your Q as often as you can, try to get three, e st three Q stacks on your enemy and then E them, as many of them as possible. If you need to heal, throw the second E, throw the D, try to pair the w with the d because that way the damage increase will remain throughout the whole duration of the dot it's also a good idea to pair it with the uh, poison i think it also increases the damage of the poison itself so it's a good idea to do that if you need heals just put this on yourself and heal by hitting as many mobs as possible and also by pairing the r with the w and also throwing the second e uh, and also doing your F. There's a lot of sustain that you have with this build, honestly. So you shouldn't have a problem in terms of that, as you will see in a second when I'm going to show the tier 8 dungeon that we've done. Now, in terms of PvP, things get a little bit more complicated. First of all, you might need to swap this for a Hunter Hood. Mage Cowl might be good in open world PvP. Like, if it just happens, it might be a good idea to try to defend yourself with this but ultimately a hunter hood would be much much better if you have no other choice then yes you can stick with this but i would say a hunter hood would be a much much better option and it's the same price so it shouldn't make any 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 difference in terms of pvp like actually how you want to play let's say you're doing corrupted dungeons the way you want to play you want to make your opponent start with a disadvantage do that by abusing the range that you have on your e let's say my opponent is that uh, pool of uh, thingy over there like that invisibility juice over there i just try to stay at the range and just always throw my first e like right now i threw my second e that i'm not supposed to do that i'm supposed to only throw the first e because the second e is very very valuable the second e is valuable because it can actually turn the tide of the battle in a 1v1 so just stay at a range throw your first e it's also on a low cooldown if you just throw the, the first one so wait for it just throw it kite your enemy try to make it so the fight starts with you having an advantage an hp advantage so try to kite as much as you can after you're not able to kite anymore you're gonna have to go into full brawl mode to go into full brawl mode you want to use your w q your enemy as often as you can you're not gonna have a poison for pvp you want to have a healing pot so don't use it if your enemy attacks you like crazy then you want to pop your hunter hood which again is not this one right here it's the hunter hood that makes you reflect damage that i used in uh, the pvp example fight that i gave if you need heals Pair the W with the R, so you increase your auto attack speed, and you can also stick to your enemy by having the extra move speed bonus. And if you need even more heal than that, throw, and only if you need more heals than that, throw the second E as well. If you just use the first E, that's actually more DPS than using both E's, because then it goes on, it goes on a longer cooldown, and uh, yeah, it's a much better idea to just abuse this as often as you can. Talking about abilities that go on a longer cooldown, if you start getting spec into this, and you unlock the third Q, this is what you want to be using the third q is amazing it's a whole different ability the third q has three stages you want to use the first and the second stage you don't want to use the third stage unless something happens i made a different guide for that uh, that build that i'm talking about right now this is the cheap 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 version and when i'm saying cheap version i mean cheap version 30 
AK Silver straight up. Now that being said, let's see the build in action. Let's see the build in action. Let's do this, boys. Let's do this. First of all, to show you how good this build can actually be, I'm gonna solo high tier content with it. Let's pop the map. All right, chat. Let's let's do the dungeon test. Can I solo tier rate dungeons with it? First question. Let's go and answer it. Okay, red gear. So I can still use red gear. That's perfect. That's perfect. Let's see if it's doable. I should have 700 IP right now. Yes! Yes! So right now I have the IP of uh, a new player. Right now I have basically the IP of a new player. So we cleared all the mobs. That was, that was a harsh pull because of the mobs. This is tough. This is tough. Like the damage that he does... Oh man, toughy tough. Full HP. This is tier 8 boss. This is tier 8 boss. I'm running with 700 IP on a new player friendly set that I want to showcase. Again, I do have a lot of game knowledge, but I cannot erase that. I cannot erase that from my mind. So that's why I died a lot of times to reduce my IP. I know it seems like a bad excuse, but those deaths were intentional. Look at my mercenary jacket. Look at my mercenary jacket. Look at everything. This boss is just dying. This boss is just dying. It's just dying. Yep. So I'm going to be trying a new build on a character... That's almost always facing sweat lots. That's a recipe for disaster. That's a recipe for disaster. Okay, now because I don't have any spec and I need to reach a certain item power cap with this, I need to go 4.2. That makes the build a little bit more expensive, but it's still among the cheapest builds for uh, for doing stuff like this. Let's see how it goes. Hmm. What's the aggro range on this mob? Come on, follow me, follow me, follow me. Let's get off those mobs. Oh, you're gonna mount up. You saw that I have framed your E and you're gonna mount up. I mean, it's the right choice. To be honest, it's the right choice. Yeah, he does not wanna fight. Oh, maybe he does, maybe he does actually. wasted all of his mobility right there unfortunately i don't have a lot of mobility either boom let's go did I prove my point that this build absolutely slaps in PvP? Watch us play live on twitch.tv slash mockdown. This video was made possible by our amazing channel members. If you want to support by becoming a channel member yourself, you are going to get access to amazing emotes that you can use in the comment section or during live streams, member only polls and lots of other awesome perks. Shout out to all of you awesome badasses. Thank you so much for supporting us.